Good morning and good afternoon, uh, all my friends from all over the world. It's my pleasure to have this chance to share our uh, experience about the uh, application of CUS in lymph nodes of breast cancer. Now I will introduce my experience from the following five parts. Um, as we know that breast cancer uh, is one of the most common malignant tumor in women worldwide. And also we know that the axillary lymph nodes status is an important factor for breast cancer treatment and uh, this for the decisions. As we know that uh, sentinel lymph nodes detection, detection methods mainly include the following, uh, the following uh, proofs and also the blue dye and the radioisotope uh, are the common methods, are the two common methods. We know that uh, the uh, tumor cells fear uh, will jump from the first lymph nodes to another one. So the sentinel lymph nodes are very important. When we do the uh, when we do the uh, CUS for finding the sentinel lymph nodes is pre-operatively, while the other methods are performed intraoperatively. So it's very important for diagnosis. Now we can see that when we do in percutaneous contrast enhanced ultrasound, um, this reflect the lymphatic perfusion when we injection one points uh, out uh, upper outer the quadrant of the areola. After we injected, we can see the enhancement enhanced uh, lymphatic duct. Then follow the duct, we can find the sentinel lymph node. This is the first lymph node we can see. So we, we will see the pattern of the enhancement of the lymph node. And then we focus on the lymph node. This is the sentinel lymph node. Then we inject, we inject the bubbles from the uh, medium elbow vein, about 2.4 ml. So, uh, we, this kind of injection reflect the blood perfusion. We will use the two kind of methods to make a diagnosis, uh, to make a location of the sentinel lymph node. So this is the whole procedure. We can see that uh, before the, uh, before the uh, operation, we use ultrasound agent uh, to find the sentinel lymph node, then we make a marker around the, uh, at the skin, then and uh, uh, including the duct and also the sentinel lymph node. Then during the operation, the surgeons they will do the blue dye and follow the follow the same duct. Also, they can find the dyed sentinel lymph node. Uh, in our hospital, at the beginning of the study, we do some co coincidence uh, uh, try. We can see here when we find a sentinel lymph node during the contrast, we put a hook guided by the ultrasound after percutaneous CUS. Then during the operation, we find that the blue dyed a sentinel lymph node is um, is a crack here. So and also we can see the hook is right in the blue dyed sentinel lymph node. This demonstrates that um, we uh, the percutaneous contrast CUS is the same with the blue dye. We, we let's see another cases. We can see here the um, we uh, we make a marker on the skin. Uh, we can see this is the duct and also the lymph node. Now we can see here during the operation, this blue dyed, uh, the tiny duct we can see here, and also the small sentinel lymph node is right here. So we can see they are the same, uh, just the, the, uh, the skin surface, is the mark is here. They are the same. 
As we know that for the previous studies, the PCS pattern, uh, most of the studies include uh, three kinds. And for the homogeneous enhancement is benign. And for heterogeneous enhancement and non-enhancement are malignant. And for intravenous CUS, there are uh, three of uh, four kinds of patterns. So uh, we think the because of the specificity and the sensitivity are different. So when in our study, we designed another kind of classification. We, uh, we made the uh, PCUS classification into two types because uh, according with the uh, sentinel lymph node features on grayscale, especially on the grayscale ultrasound, we can see um, the, uh, the features changed. So the type one to three are malignant and type uh, four to six are benign. Now let's see separately. So the first one, type one, is only part of the cortex were enhanced. We can see here the cortex are thick. Uh, here the the uh, lymph node thick, uh, cortex they are thick, and but only part of the cortex was enhanced. And type two, uh, we can see here also the cortex are thick, and we can see partial. Uh, cortical filling defect, we can see here the defect. And type three is non-enhancement. That means no bubbles into the sentinel lymph node. We can see here. And also we can see the uh, cortex are thick. And type four to type six, uh, they, are, uh, they, are, they are benign, they are benign. And for type four, uh, the uh, homogeneous high enhancement, this is very easy. For type five, uh, the diffuse inhomogeneous high enhancement, for these two kinds are easy. But for type four, uh, six, there are three kinds because of the uh, complex uh, features in the, uh, in the lymph node itself. For type four A, they, um, they are none or low enhancement of the lymphatic healers. We can see the healers here, no or none or low enhancement, but the homogeneous high enhancement in the cortex. And for B, half showed homogeneous high enhancement and another half showed non enhancement. Uh, for um, six, six C means only part of the cortex has enhanced. Others were non enhanced, and the lymph node cortex were evenly thick or not thick. We can see here on the grayscale, it is a typical uh, benign lymph node. So we know that because of the um, complicated features of the lymph node itself, it was divided into six types. But for the intravenous CUS, we uh, should uh, we should observe two kinds of this uh, information. The first is the orders of the bubbles entering the lymph nodes. Uh, it includes centrifugal or centripetal or diffuse enhancement. For the uh, benign, it is centrifugal enhancement, and the other two are malignant. For enhancement pattern, uh, the uh, first is homogeneous high enhancement or diffuse inhomogeneous or non or low enhancement of the lymphatic healers and homogeneous high enhancement of the cortex. Type four, part of the cortical filling defect. Now let's see the pictures of uh, each type. For type one, we can see here the homogeneous high enhancement. This is bubbles was in the, um, in the uh, uh, in the vessels, not in the lymphatic duct. Uh, type two is diffused inhomogeneous high enhancement. And for type three, there's no or low enhancement of the lymphatic healers. We can see the healers here. And four, the type four is part of the cortex filling defect. We can see here. And also we can see compared to the uh, grayscale, we can see the cortex is thick. For the 
um, for the diagnosis criteria of a, a sentinel lymph node, it was malignant when PCUS or and or IVCUS diagnosed as malignant. Now, uh, in our study, we find that the sensitivity, uh, uh, specificity on the positive PPV, MPV, and the accuracy are higher. Uh, we, we can see here in this table, it is higher um, than um, we use the, the only three kinds of types. So uh, it is more than 90% for uh, specificity, um, PPV, and accuracy. And also the AUC is higher for the combined CUS, means uh, PCUS and IVCUS. Boom. The, because the combined CUS can uh, can afford uh, more information for the diagnosis of sentinel lymph node. This is the uh, this this is the uh, AOC we can see here. The combined CUS has the uh, most most uh, 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 yes most efficiency. Yes, it's bigger. Now let's see a case. Uh, we can see here. Mm, this is the 61 years old female with left breast cancer. Um, this is a mucosus carcinoma. The tumor is uh, at one o'clock and the uh, tumor is about two centimeter. We can see here the, uh, this is the S, uh, SWE, yes, shear wave elastography. We can see uh, the uh, Emax is about 116 ki uh, kilo uh, pasta. A keeper. Then uh, this is a typical malignant tumor, and uh, this is the this is a lymph node uh, in the uh, axilla. How do you think about the lymph node, benign or malignant? How do you think? Now uh, here we can see uh, the tumor is uh, uh, around here. This is a PCUS. The percutaneous CUS, we find the sentinel lymph node. This is a it is a uh, sentinel lymph node. We can see the defect here, so we think it is about a malignant sentinel lymph node. And this one is the uh, intravenous CUS. We can see the bubbles come from the uh, surrounding area first, then to the center. So this is a centripetal. So this is also malignant, and also uh, yes, the final diagnosis is metastasis. And the second case is a uh, 59 years old female with left breast cancer. This is an IDC at around two o'clock. Uh, the size about uh, two or two centimeter, but on CUS it is around three centimeter. How do you think about this uh, lymph node? Also, that lymph node is also the uh, sentinel lymph node as we found at, uh, at the uh, percutaneous CUS. After injection of the uh, uh, intravenous, we can see the, sen the sentinel lymph node is homogeneous enhancement. So this is a benign one. So the, uh, mm, uh, the CUS of percutaneous and the intravenous uh, uh, CUS can afford um, more, more information to the to locate the sentinel lymph node and make a correct diagnosis. So we think it has a higher diagnostic and it is a superior to grayscale ultrasound. And also uh, it can help uh, clinical doctors to understand in advance whether there is a possibility of the blue staining in the sentinel lymph node. As we know that uh, some lymph node can't be stained because it is also uh, show non-enhancement in ultrasound. And it can reduce the number of non-blue stained lymph node resections also. Uh, uh, and uh, finally, there is a sig significant open overlap in imaging of benign and malignant lymph nodes. For further experience uh, needs to be summarized and uh, combine, maybe we can combine the artificial intelligence to improve the accuracy of diagnosis. 
Uh, this is uh, the part of my colleague in our hospital. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes, yes, excellent presentation as expected. Thank you. We have already some questions for you. First one from Arizona, two from Arizona, about uh, the dye injection. Before injecting the dye at areolar, how do we yes. estimate the lymphatic drainage? I'm sorry, sir, I, I didn't catch you. Before injecting the dye at areolar, yes. how, do, how do you estimate the lymphatic drainage? How do I estimate the do the the dots? Yeah, the ducts, the, the lymphatic ducts to be sure. The ducts, that you are yeah, the yeah, ducts the right? The lymphatic ducts. Yeah. Oh. We just follow the enhancement duct. We can't find the duct on grid scale, just on enhancement. We can follow that. So you don't you, you don't evaluate before injecting. No, no, oh. just uh, during the uh, uh, the enhancement after injection. Okay. Mm. And again, about dye, can the dye or the contrast not get into the vascular stream? Uh, the the bubbles, uh, you you mean the intravenous intravenous uh, injection? Yeah. yeah. Uh, about two point four uh, ml. Okay, and uh, Hortansia asks you, do you inject intravenous the contrast or tran transdermally? In, in, sorry, sorry. Do you inject the contrast the, medium? Yes. Medium, yes. Intravenously or transdermally? Intravenously. Intravenously, okay. About 13 years first, then intravenous. Okie dokie, excellent. Oh, thank you. So far, thanks a lot again, Professor Zeng. Excellent presentation. Let's move on to the second one.